Hey, Karen. Hey, Andy. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Um, so, you told me about it the other day, but you have a rubric, a, a depth of reflection rubric. And yes. I was hoping you could tell me more about that. It, it seems like it was going to help the students to improve their ability to, to observe and to reflect. Yeah. I've used it in many classes, and I really do think that it helps people to observe and reflect better. Um, don't you think some of the students would just follow the descriptions just to get a higher grade? Yes. Yeah, but if they follow the guidelines, then eventually it becomes habit, and then it, they have the habit of reflecting more deeply. Okay. Could you, you have a few minutes you could walk me through it? so I can get a better idea about it? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. So, to start, level one is the least amount of depth, level seven is the greatest amount of depth. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Um, and I think the idea is that every higher level of the rubric contains the characteristics of the lower levels. Correct. So, <clears throat> everything that's true about level one is also true about level two, and everything that's true about level one and level two is also true about level three, and so on. Okay, okay, I yep. think I get that. Now, it says level two, um, something must be observed. Why does, why does there have to be an observation to have depth of reflection? That's a really good question. Um, well, this rubric was originally developed for classroom observation. Mm -hmm. And so if a teacher is writing a reflection about a classroom, but only talks about what he thinks and doesn't refer to what he observed in the class, then it's not really a reflection on the class. Now, if we use this rubric in a different situation, then we can take the idea of observation and, and use it more generally. But what we want to do is really root our reflection in the actual characteristics of what we're reflecting on. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, the, the next level seems to add one more characteristic. So at level three, it says we should use technical terms? Technical terms. Mm hmm So for this class, for example, we could use technical terms like intercultural competence, microculture, depth of reflection, or even the term culture itself. Okay. Well, it seems like it would be difficult not to do that. <laughs> yeah. For some people, yes, but for some people, no. Okay. Okay. So the next level is level four. What's, what's different about that level? Um, at level four, the person describes not only what's happened, but also her perspective, and also thinking how what happened can affect other people. Okay. Okay, so level four is, is looking at it from my perspective, then level five would be looking at it from other people's perspective. That's right. And that's really the hallmark of reflection, mm -hmm. because you need to not just see it from one perspective, but from multiple perspectives. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm guessing that level six and seven are, are kind of special. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's very rare to find level six or level seven in somebody's reflection, but it's what we're shooting for. It's like the ideal. Okay. So at level six, the person is not only thinking about others' perspectives, but they're actually working to change their own perspective. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's why this level is called critical reflection, because at this level, level six, the person is really questioning their own perspective. Okay. So at level seven, we start to bring in the ethical and the moral issues mm -hmm. and to think about what can happen in the future. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the person at this level, at the top level, is doing a lot of things. They're talking about what actually happened, what was observed. They're thinking about their own perspective. They're taking into account multiple perspectives. They're questioning their own perspective. They're using the technical terms doing all of this. And now, at level seven, they're thinking about ethical or moral implications. And when you do that, that means you think about how should you act in the future. 
Okay. So one thing I'm really taking from this rubric is that the, the truly deep reflection actually changes the person who's doing the reflection. Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. Really, because if you don't change when you learn something, then have you really learned something? So real deep reflection does. It changes the person who's done the reflection. Okay, great. I'm excited to see what lies ahead. Great.